What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and a lot of people are going to be asking themselves very soon, should I stick to Android, my Galaxy S6 Edge, or should I switch over to the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus? With this video, I wanted to give you guys a good idea, actually 15 to be precise, why you should switch over to iPhone from Android. Now this isn't particularly for the S6 Edge, this can be applied to many Android phones, but I'm just going to focus on it for the duration of this video. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to get you to give up your beloved Android operating system. I understand that both sides have their pros and cons. However, if you're even remotely considering swapping over to the iPhone, this video will give you 15 good reasons as to why that's a good idea. Diehard Android fans, you can turn this off right now because this video won't give you some magical insight you haven't heard of before. The iPhone 6S, although it's new beautiful hardware, it's not going to change your mind. This is just for people that are considering the change. Now, I just want to add that until now with the 6S release, the S6 and iPhone 6 were not evenly matched with the S6 and 6S. Oh man, that's a mouthful. It's finally a fair fight. In retrospect, looking back at the iPhone 6, the performance wasn't all that bad comparing it to the S6 Edge Plus. I mean, it did a little bit worse in the multi-core score, but single cores, that's where it matters for daily usage tasks. It did very well. Now, can you imagine the iPhone 6S with that all new A9 chip, two gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, and this is all rumored, but it is likely to happen. Can you imagine Imagine just how well this thing is going to do, especially paired with the optimization of the iPhone. Apple's basically going to be playing hardware catch up with the iPhone 6S. And if you're used to superb performance, switching from an S6 to an iPhone 6S, not only will you see that performance on the iPhone, but it could possibly even be improved. Now, a lot of people are going to be pointing specs in the face of prospective iPhone 6 or 6S purchasers. The reason the S6 needs such high specs is because it doesn't do very well with optimizing the memory it does have. There's memory leaks. There's true native multitasking. So there's a lot of places where you would need three gigabytes of RAM or four on Android. The iPhone does so well with what it has and two gigabytes of RAM on the 6S will be more than enough. So if it's the specs that have always put you off of iPhone, the iPhone 6S will do so much better. It'll have that new A9 chip, possibly triple or quad core and two gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. Again, this is based off of rumors. We won't actually know how these two compare on the performance level till I have both in hand and test them doing a full speed test test and I will have that on my channel. Another argument many people use is the fact that Android and most Samsung phones have removable SD cards and batteries and that was true for the S4, S5, all previous Android phones until the S6 and S6 Edge. You can no longer do that. So the playing field is now even. There's no reason you wouldn't buy an iPhone just because of these two things because they don't exist on either side anymore. And talk about being ahead of the curve. Apple has been offering no SD or removable batteries since the iPhone 2G. I can't kid guys, I kid. iOS 9 catches up to Android in many ways, many of them being very obvious. I mean, why would it have Apple added them before? And I won't lie, not only was Apple inspired by Android for some of these features, some of them they blatantly copied. Although you don't get split screen multitasking or picture in picture or even an option to restart your phone from the power menu, iOS 9 is a welcome change as it brings transit, actually search in settings, the shift key actually works on iOS 9. You can actually select the frames per second for video, change the resolution like you've been able to do on Android for years already and there's many that I'm not mentioning here but basically iOS 9 is heavily inspired by its competition so if you're used to Android it's going to be good coming to iOS and seeing many of the features you're so used to here. The iPhone 6s is rumored to receive a 12 megapixel camera just putting it 4 megapixels under the 16 on the S6 Edge so although it's not their megapixel count it will be there quality wise especially in nighttime. Front facing camera finally receiving a much needed upgrade bringing it up to the level of 5 megapixel on the Galaxy S6 as well as a wide angle sensor. So thank goodness for that. Now the one thing I gotta say about the iPhone when putting it down on a table, the camera doesn't jut out as far as the S6 Edge so it makes for more comfortable using it with one hand laying flat on the table. Now a technology that the iPhone 6S will bring is the force touch display that'll allow you to press harder on the display to activate different gestures. Now that's something no doubt Samsung will adopt just like they adopted Touch ID in the form of their fingerprint sensor in the next generation Samsung. But for now, the iPhone 6S is unique with that display and there's nothing Samsung offers anything like it. Can you guys imagine a world where you buy a phone and you don't get it preloaded with a whole bunch of applications? Well, 
I can't either. The iPhone does come with some bloatware, some applications that you cannot uninstall. However, they're significantly less in number than on the Galaxy S6. Now, depending on which carrier you have, you'll get a varying amount of bloatware and most of it cannot be removed. Some of it can be disabled, but lots of this stuff is working in the background without your consent. So it can be annoying having to go and disable every single application and it's taking up room that you can't remove. That's something I've always been happy with the iPhone about. It gives you a clean experience. Now, although Apple isn't offering $200 for you to switch over to iPhone like Samsung does, they do have this really nifty application called Move to iPhone that transfers everything on your phone from Android over to iOS. And this will be available once the iPhone success is launched with iOS 9. Now, both of these devices do cost roughly the same. There should be no reason you don't want to switch over to the iPhone 6S just because it costs more than a brand new S6 Edge. And as history has shown us, iPhone holds its value very, very well, whereas Samsung usually drops and drops further every single year. I'm very surprised at how well the iPhone holds its value. Now take a look at this. These are all the devices Apple currently supports phone-wise on iOS 9. That's four generations of devices right there and it's incredible how long Apple does support their devices. Whereas on Android some of the phones you buy and in one and a half two years they're completely outdated. This is the current lineup from Galaxy that even has the newest update. It's kind of ridiculous. Now I got to tell you Apple's been very good with filtering down features from the newest devices to older ones as long as they make sense performance wise. So just because you have an older iPhone doesn't mean it's automatically outdated past two years. Now that brings me to this point, software. Depending on which carrier you have, you're really at their mercy with the S6 Edge. You might not get an update for months and months after everybody else has, whereas on the iPhone, even update rollouts. And that is amazing. Everybody has the latest features and security updates at the same time. Now Galaxy does make some tough phones. I'm not going to lie, I've tested so many of them, and when it comes to drop tests and shock, the Galaxy always does so much better. Now this time around, Apple's upgrading the strength of the iPhone 6S, so if durability is a major worry for you, don't be worried. The 6S will improve where the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus lacked. The iPhone 6S shell leak by Unbox Therapy points to a new material being used in the iPhone 6S material. However, when it comes to displays, we don't know much yet, but there could be a new, more durable display on the iPhone iPhone 6s. Now there's really no denying this, the numbers back it up. The iPhone 6s's app store has way more applications in it than the Play Store. However, that doesn't necessarily mean it's better. There's a lot of junk apps in there as well. However, I would like to point out not only is there a more diverse app selection, updates are pushed out sooner on iOS rather than on Android. In this case, Snapchat gets an update almost 10 days sooner than the Android version. You can also use Android Wear with iOS, however, you can't use the Apple Watch with Android, and that's arguable as to why you would need it but however there are many google applications on the app store whereas vice versa if there is a certain application you want to use from the iphone on android you will not find it so it's nice to have that cross compatibility there the integration that the iphone 6s will provide with your computer is really awesome it's nice to be able to pick up where you left off from your ipad your iphone on your computer android has nothing like this and vice versa it's so cool to be wherever you are at work and pick up right where you were off on your computer at home now, the one place I can vouch for the iPhone in my personal experience is the support. I had a front-facing camera that was offset, just replaced. It's called the Crescent Moon Issue. No questions asked. Even sometimes if your phone is out of warranty, if it's a defect on their part, Apple will fix their mistake. And it's so nice having a store you can walk into without having to ship your phone. Now, are there a ton more reasons to use the S6 over the iPhone 6S? Yeah, and there are so many that I haven't even mentioned, but I just wanted to let you guys know that the iPhone 6S will level the playing field. It's finally in a true competition with the Galaxy S6 and as this video has shown us there's a lot of good reasons to use the iPhone 6s over the S6. It's really not as bad as you guys think. These phones are becoming very similar in nature. No more micro SD or batteries that are removable. I mean of course there's a lot of restrictions on the iPhone but as far as features go Apple's really catching up and in terms of processing power and cameras. Within the week we're gonna know what the iPhone 6s is all about and once I have these guys in hand I'll be doing full comparisons but as this it's looking now based on all of the rumors and chatter about these guys the iPhone 6s is finally gonna bring some competition to the table and it might outperform the Galaxy S6 Edge I cannot wait until the day to see that so I don't mean to come off too strong but buy an iPhone Apple is where the softer updates flow like water on a thirsty day where they know what you want but they don't care they're gonna give you something that you didn't even know you wanted or customizing your phone isn't allowed where we say F you to removable batteries and SD cards
that's all I got for you. Those are 15 good reasons to switch from your Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge or any Android phone for that matter to the all new iPhone 6S, which is coming very, very soon. Of course, once I do have this guy in hand, I'll be showing you guys everything there is comparing these devices and how they really stack up. But how it's looking right now, this thing is really going to be a showstopper. And hopefully this video gave you a good idea, some good insight as to why you should switch to the iPhone 6S from a Galaxy device. Hopefully I didn't come off as too pushy. I love both of these, but truly the iPhone 6S is going to be amazing and I cannot wait to see it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you guys liked it, be sure to like and subscribe for many more great videos. Have a great day and be sure to check out many of the other videos on my channel. Peace.